number of flood evacuees in Kelantan drops. Citizenships awarded in accordance with federal constitution. Good afternoon. You're watching News on 2. I'm Zaliha Ismail. The number of flood victims still sheltered at 14 evacuation centres in Kelantan as at 8 a.m. is 2,298, comprising 823 families, which is a decrease from 2,589 at 8 p.m. yesterday. According to the Social Welfare Department's Info Banjir application, most of the affected residents are in Pasi Mas with 1,382 from 535 families who are staying at eight centres, followed by Tumpat with 892 people from 283 families at five centres and Pasir Puteh with 24 people from five families at one centre. State flood portal ebanjir.klantan.gov.my reported that the water level in Sungai Golod Rantau Panjang was 9.29 metres at 7 a.m. compared to 9.66 metres at 8 p.m. The danger level is 9 metres. The portal also reported that no main roads have been closed to traffic with the weather being fine today. And in Pahang, the floods have fully abated, enabling 25 people sheltered at the remaining evacuation centre at Kuala Samantan Raup Community Hall to return home at 7.30 a.m. Pahang Civil Defence Force Director Zainal Yusuf said the group was from seven families. And meanwhile, in Trungganu, only 172 from 46 families are still sheltered at two centres. According to the Info Banjay portal, 150 people from Kuala Nurus are staying at Sekolah Kebangsaan SK Complex, Gongpada. In Marang, 22 people from eight families are staying at SK Pasir Puteh. And meanwhile, the National Disaster Management Agency, or NADMA, is prepared to face the possibility of a second wave of floods following the high tide phenomenon expected to occur on December 7th. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Dato Sri Dr. Shaidan Kasim, said the, this included freezing leave of all security agency personnel such as the Civil Defence Force APM, the Royal Malaysia Police PDRM, and Fire and Rescue Department and NADMA. In addition, the minister said the government will also be facilitating the coordination of air assets for search and rescue purposes, which will be operated by the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA. On the prolonged floods in the low-lying areas, Datuk Sri Dr. Shahidan urged the Drainage and Irrigation Department, DID, to find a solution to the problem as the flood victims could not return home even after the flood water had receded. The federal government is studying the expenditure involved in carrying out the 13 flood mitigation projects, or RTB, in Pulau Pinang. Special Advisor to the Prime Minister for the Northern Corridor Economic Region, NCER, Datuk Sri Zanal Abidin Osman, said once the cost had been refined, the plan would be handed over to the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment for a decision on the implementation according to priority. One of the main priorities of the project implementation is to expand the river as well as compensate landowners who live near the river. The RTB project will be implemented in stages and priority will be given to areas most affected by the recent floods. Kita akan perhalusi kosnya dan juga apa implikasi kewangan pada kerajaan dan kita akan buat keputusan yang akan diputuskan oleh kabinet banyak mana dulu kita nak, nak belanja. How much we have to spend first? Daripada 13 projek yang dalam belanja 1 bilion ni, yang mana nak mula dulu? Datuk Sri Zainal Abidin was speaking after officiating a flood aid program bersama Utaraku in Permatang Pau. 1,000 houses in six flood-affected parliamentary areas would be rehabilitated under the program. For a start, the parliamentary constituencies involved in the project are Permatang Pau, Tasik Gelugo and Kepala Batas in Penang, as well as Kulim, Padang Serai and Bandar Baharu in Kedah. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak has proposed a 30% women senator quota to be implemented in the upper house should Parisan National obtain a stronger mandate in the 14th general election. 
Speaking at the opening of the International Conference on Women in Politics 2017 yesterday, the Premier called for more women participation in politics in recognition of their contribution, adding that AMNO has long relied on women for support, especially housewives in rural constituencies who form the core of the party's Juanita wing. In terms of women in politics, we would like to see more participation as their presence would better reflect the electorate and make the political process more inclusive, thus strengthening our democracy. The Premier also said that Malaysia had a strong track record when it came to women's rights, with women filling 35% of top management posts in the country. It was also announced under Budget 2018 that government-linked companies and government-linked investment companies are now required to have at least 30% women as board members. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi has denied claims that the citizenship approval of 7,126 undocumented Indian Malaysians was done so that they could vote for Barisan National in the 14th general election. Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid, who is also the Home Minister, stressed that efforts to track them began since four years ago, involving both political parties and non-governmental organizations, and was done in accordance with several provisions under the federal constitution. Saya tidak akan pernah menyalahgunakan kuasa, dan saya menterjemahkan apa yang termaktub dalam perbagaan, dan apa yang diizinkan itu saja yang diberikan, dan tentunya jangan manipulasikan soal itu. Speaking during a special program held in conjunction with the 2017 AMNO General Assembly, Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid said that with the approval, the allegation that 300,000 Indians were denied citizenship rights was false. Over 12,000 citizenship applications had been received. However, only 7,126 were approved because they met the criteria required, such as being in the country before August 31, 1957. In a separate development, Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid proposed that heavier punishment be imposed on both bribe receiver and giver in a bid to effectively stop corruption. He urged the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, or MECC, to expand its anti-corruption efforts to cover all sectors as corruption will not only have adverse impact on the government's administration, but it can also tarnish the image of the private sector. Kita lihat, kita lihat juga bahawa penerima rasuah sering dikaitkan dengan pegawai, pegawai di dalam sektor awal atau pihak kerja. Mereka dikawal setelah sasaran dan dilakukan dan mereka dihukum. Kita mendukung cadangan supaya Dato Sri Dr Ahmad Zahid also urged the corporate bodies and private sector to take the corruption-free pledge as carried out by the ministries, agencies and government departments as a sign of willingness to cooperate with MACC to combat the problem. The Deputy Premier also praised the MACC on the role played by the Commission to improve Malaysia's position in the Corruption Perception Index to 55th out of 176 countries last year. Facebook has a new messaging app aimed at those 13 and under. Details coming up. Stay with us. The Higher Education Ministry has launched the Blueprint on Lifelong Learning for Islamic Education 2017 to 2025 in a bid to strengthen Tafis and Pondo education system through the integration of technical and vocational education and training, or TVET, and entrepreneurship. Its minister, Dato Sri Idris Jusso, who launched the plan at University Science Malaysia in Ilai Negris Milan yesterday, said the plan will give added value and continue to strengthen Islamic education up to international level in line with the fourth industrial revolution. Plan ini supaya, saya kata tadi, supaya dapat menyatukan, centralize 
uh, satu pelan yang lebih tersusun lah untuk melihat kualiti program, untuk melihat uh, lebih banyak lagi keterlibatan pusat tahfiz ke madrasah dan juga membawa dia ke peringkat global. Bukan hanya sama-sama kita saja, kita boleh. Uh, kita belajar best practices dan kerjasama dengan di luar negara. The minister said to attend the aspirations of the blueprint for strategic thrusts had been drawn up, namely quality enhancement, widening access, ecosystem sustainability and globalization. Lifelong learning initiative for Islamic education has been implemented through various programs since 2015 and with the blueprint in place, it is hoped that the number of programs and participants will continue to increase. The fisheries department has launched three strategic development plans aimed at empowering the fisheries sector in the country. The plans were launched by Deputy Agriculture and Agribiz Industry Minister Datuk Sri Tajuddin Abdul Rahman yesterday to mark the first 100 days of the department's new leadership. The three plans are the Fisheries Management Plan, the Fisheries Department Strategic Plan Acceleration and the My Community Framework, which also aimed at developing fish stocks in the country's waters, ensuring the sustainability of fish supply for generations to come and strengthening the fishing community. Datuk Sri Tajudin said the plans showed the department's proactive, visionary and strategic thinking in its efforts to improve the fisheries sector and to turn it into one of contributors to the country's wealth. Meanwhile, Fisheries Department Director General Datuk Munir Muhammad Nawi in his speech said the objective of the department's strategic plans were to manage the country's fishery resources to be more organized and efficient as well as addressing the issues of fish leakages and depletion of fish stocks. And that concludes this afternoon's editions of News on 2. In our top story, number of flood evacuees in Kelantan drops. We'll be back at 7 this evening. Until then, I'm Zala Ismail. Thanks for watching. Have a pleasant day.